Imagine possessing a tool so powerful, it can transform your life completely. This is the promise of the Four Agreements, a set of principles penned by Don Miguel Ruiz that, when applied, can bring about profound change in our lives. Let's consider a metaphor to illustrate this transformative power. Think of a seed, a tiny, seemingly insignificant speck, yet within it lies the potential to grow into a towering tree, given the right conditions. The seed doesn't transform overnight, of course, it requires time, nurturing, and the right environment to grow. This process mirrors the journey we embark upon when we adopt the four agreements. They are like seeds we plant within ourselves. As we water these seeds with understanding and nourish them with practice, they begin to grow. They take root in our consciousness, gradually altering our perceptions, our actions, and ultimately, our reality. The first of these seeds, be impeccable with your word, teaches us the power of language, urging us to use our words wisely and kindly. The second seed, don't take anything personally, frees us from the shackles of others' opinions and judgments. The third seed, don't make assumptions, invites us to seek clarity instead of relying on guesswork. And the final seed, always do your best, encourages us to strive for excellence, not perfection. Just as a tree grows stronger and taller over time, so does our understanding and application of these agreements. With each passing day, we become more attuned to their wisdom, more adept at applying them, and more resilient in the face of life's challenges. Like the tree that stands tall against the wind, we too become unyielding in the face of adversity. The four agreements, therefore, are not just principles to live by. They are seeds of transformation, of growth, of resilience. They are the tools we need to cultivate a life of harmony, authenticity, and fulfillment. Just like a tree, the four agreements offer us the opportunity to grow and transform our lives fundamentally. Words, they are powerful tools. The first agreement teaches us to be impeccable with our words. Think of words as the paintbrushes of our reality. Each stroke, each word we say, paints a picture of the world we live in. Imagine a man, let's call him John. John was stuck in a cycle of negativity, constantly telling himself he was unworthy and unlovable. The more he repeated these words to himself, the more they shaped his perception of reality. He felt unloved because he told himself he was unlovable. His world was a reflection of the words he used. Now consider the words we use daily. How often do we use words that harm rather than heal, that tear down rather than build up? Our words have the power to shape not only our own realities but also the realities of those around us. A harsh word can ruin a person's day while a kind word can light up their world. But let's go back to John. John decided to change his words to be impeccable with them. Instead of telling himself he was unlovable, he started saying he was worthy of love. He replaced his negative self-talk with positive affirmations. The shift was gradual but over time his perception of reality changed. He felt loved because he told himself he was lovable. His world was transformed by the words he used. Being impeccable with your words is not about being perfect, it's about being mindful of the power they hold. It's about choosing words that uplift rather than degrade, that heal rather than harm. It's about using words to create a positive reality rather than a negative one. Words are not just sounds or symbols on a page. They are the building blocks of our reality, the tools we use to shape our world. And when we use them responsibly, when we are impeccable with our words, we can create a world of love, respect, and positivity. Being impeccable with your words means using them responsibly and positively. Remember, your words can change your world. Ever felt hurt by someone's words or actions? The second agreement shows us a different perspective. Imagine you're at a get-together, enjoying your time. Suddenly, a friend makes a snide remark about your outfit. You feel a pang of hurt and embarrassment. But let's rewind and apply the second agreement. Don't take anything personally. This agreement tells us that what others say and do is a projection of their own reality, their own dream. When you are immune to the opinions and actions of others, you won't be the victim of needless suffering. So, in our scenario, instead of feeling hurt, you understand that your friend's comment is more about them than it is about you. Maybe they're having a bad day, or perhaps they're struggling with their own insecurities. This doesn't mean you should ignore feedback or constructive criticism. It's about understanding the difference between an objective observation and a subjective opinion. It's about realizing that your worth is not dependent on what others think or say about you. Consider this. Each one of us has a unique worldview, shaped by our experiences and beliefs. We interpret everything around us through this personal lens. So when someone expresses a negative opinion, it's often just a reflection of their personal worldview. 
not an absolute truth about you or your actions. Not taking anything personally is not about building a wall around ourselves or becoming emotionally detached. It's about developing a healthier relationship with our emotions and understanding that we have the power to choose how we respond to the world around us. It's a liberating agreement, really. You no longer need to carry the weight of others' opinions or let their actions dictate your emotional state. You can live your life more authentically, more freely. Remember it's not about dismissing others' feelings or perspectives but about not letting them define your self-worth or color your reality. It's about standing firm in your truth and respecting others' truths without letting them disturb your peace. By not taking anything personally you free yourself from the chains of others' opinions and actions. How often have we jumped to conclusions only to regret it later? The third agreement advises us not to make assumptions. Imagine this scenario. John, a dedicated employee, used to have a fraught relationship with his boss. He often assumed his boss was displeased with his work, misinterpreting the boss's quiet demeanor as dissatisfaction. His work suffered, and so did their relationship. Then one day, John came across the third agreement. Don't make assumptions. He decided to apply it. Instead of assuming he started asking his boss directly for feedback. To his surprise his boss was quite happy with his work, he was just a man of few words. This small change in John's approach led to a significant improvement in their relationship and John's overall job satisfaction. Assumptions. They're like those pesky little gremlins that whisper in our ears, causing misunderstandings and conflict. We've all been there, right? We assume we know what others are thinking or feeling, we assume their intentions, we even assume what they will do next. But here's the thing, assumptions are not reality. They are constructs of our mind based on our perceptions and past experiences. When we make assumptions we're essentially trying to read minds. And unless you have some extraordinary psychic abilities, chances are you're not very good at it. This mind reading act can lead to a whole lot of unnecessary drama. We can end up feeling hurt, angry or confused all because of a scenario we've cooked up in our heads. The antidote to assumptions? Clear communication. It's as simple as that. Ask questions, seek clarification, express your needs clearly. It might feel uncomfortable at first but it's a small price to pay for avoiding the potential misunderstandings and conflicts that assumptions can cause. And when we stop making assumptions, something amazing happens. We open up a world of clarity and understanding, we see people and situations as they truly are, not as we assume they are. Our relationships improve, our stress levels drop, and we experience a newfound sense of peace. So the next time you catch yourself making an assumption, remember John's story, take a step back, ask questions, seek the truth. Because, when we don't make assumptions, we open up a world of clarity and understanding. Perfection is not the goal, but doing your best is. The fourth agreement encourages us to always do our best. Imagine yourself on a journey, a marathon, rather than a sprint. You're not competing against anyone else but striving to outdo your own past performances. Let's take the example of a writer, Jane. Jane has a dream to pen a best-selling novel. She knows the road is long and full of obstacles but she's committed to giving her best shot. Every day, Jane sits at her desk, pouring her heart and soul into her work. There are days when the words flow like a river and there are days when they barely trickle. But regardless of the circumstances, Jane is relentless. She doesn't aim for perfection in every sentence she writes. Instead, she focuses on giving her best, every single day. When Jane finally completes her novel, she doesn't immediately compare it to the works of the greats. She knows that her best effort may not necessarily result in a masterpiece, but she also knows that she has grown and improved as a writer during the process. This fourth agreement, always do your best, is a commitment to continuous improvement. It's not about being the best but about being better than you were yesterday. It's a promise to yourself that regardless of the outcome, you will not regret the effort you put in. It's the understanding that your best will vary from day to day, but that doesn't make it any less valuable. Embracing this agreement leads to self-improvement and fulfillment. It's about finding satisfaction in the journey, not just the destination. It's about acknowledging your progress, celebrating your victories, and learning from your setbacks. It's about realizing that your best effort is enough and that you are enough. By living this agreement, Jane or anyone for that matter, creates a life of growth, resilience, and satisfaction. You see, it's not about achieving perfection, but about embracing the beauty of effort, the power of persistence, and the satisfaction of knowing you gave it your all. By always doing your best, you create a life of excellence and satisfaction. 
The four agreements offer a powerful guide for life transformation. They encourage us to be honest, unburdened, open-minded, and always strive for excellence. These principles seemingly simple hold profound implications for personal growth and happiness. When applied consistently, they cultivate a life of freedom, authenticity, and inner peace. They're more than just words, they're a lifestyle, so why not delve deeper? Grab a copy of Don Miguel Ruiz's enlightening book, embark on this journey to transformation, experience the power of the four agreements today.